after the first few games back, you're about to see the 10 hottest starts from NBA players in the bubble, despite fans on Zoom making things seem like we're in an alternate universe. Can yeah! Gary can, Gary can hear us! Yes, he can! Give us the thumbs up, Gary! Yeah! Yeah, it's good. Players across the league are back to dropping ridiculous stat lines. Stick around to see how each player's gotten back to beastly production and ultimately the most impactful start at number one. If you haven't already and enjoy this content, go ahead and splash that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at dflowhoops. Now let's get into it. Number 10, Fred Van Vliet. Steady Freddy just lit up the heat for a career-high 36 points and carried the Raptors to their second straight W to open the seeding games, hitting ridiculously tough jumpers off the dribble with heat defenders at times disrespecting his range but for the most part, right in his grill, Van Vliet tore through the Miami defense and ended up getting the game-winning steal. This shot in the face of Kelly Olynyk, several feet behind the three-point line I thought had no chance of going in, but with a remarkable hop jumper from extended range, Freddie was able to continuously knock down clutch shots all game long. For this Toronto squad, I've realized that if either Van Vliet or Lowry, who lit it up for 33-14 and 14 in the Raptors' first game, if either of those two players get it going, you can bet the Raptors will find a way to win the game. From an opponent's perspective, if you key in on shutting those two guards down, the Raptors are beatable after that, but for now, Kyle and Fred are managing the game brilliantly and going off. Number 9, Jaron Jackson Jr. Just sit back and admire the polished dribbling ability of the 20-year-old phenom Triple J, a player with a 7'4 wingspan who's equipped with guard skills operating on the perimeter. Those skills, skills from Jackson Jr. include his elusive trigger from distance, which helped him knock down an impressive mark of 40% of his three-point shots over these first two games. He is playing a game as of this recording, but even though Memphis is 0-2 so far in Orlando, Jaron's desperately attempted to keep the young Grizzlies in games, who took a devastating L when DeLon Brooks fell for DeRozan's savvy pump fake. However, the possession before that, watching this brilliantly clutch shot from the stretch big Jaron with Rudy Gay directly in his grill live, for some reason reminded me of watching Kevin Durant's four-point play over Gasol back in the 2014 playoffs. That's how amazing it was. Overall, in the three-point shooting-based NBA, Jackson Jr.'s giant stature and revolutionary abilities at that size could help Memphis to new heights in the next few years. Number 8, Jalen Brown. Whether exploding to the bucket with abandon or popping his extremely efficient three-point shot, Jalen Brown's on a different level of eliteness from earlier this season. In Sunday's win against Portland, 16 of Brown's 30 points came in the fourth quarter. As under control as a player could be amidst the clutch scenario, the new superstar looking Jalen calmly knocked down four pressured three pointers, the last of which came directly in Mello's face. But it's the balance and focus Brown displays on shots like these, over a great contest from Yusuf Nurkic, that make you realize that Jalen Brown's taking the time off to significantly upgrade his scoring repertoire. Jalen's a special two way talent, and his development after nearly half a year off could be huge for fans in Beantown. Number 7, Joel Embiid. JoJo bullied the Pacers to the tune of 41 points, 21 rebounds, and 3 blocks, but it wasn't enough for Philly to get a crucial win. Embiid looks as in shape as he's ever been, and getting up and down the floor is a seamless task for him, something we haven't been able to say consistently in the past. So without a doubt, physically the hiatus benefited Embiid, but what about the mental side of things? He confronted young teammate Shake Milton in a way that seemed overly aggressive and unnecessary. Ultimately, the stats are nice for the two-time All-Defensive Team player and three-time All-Star, but winning's what matters, and nobody's considering Joel Embiid a top-five player in this league until he gets his team to at least the conference finals. Number six, Russell Westbrook. Knocking down four free throw attempts in the final minute of a telling 127-124 W over the number one team in the NBA, Brody came through in the clutch in the Rockets' second game in the bubble. I love a few things from the way Russ has been performing. First of all, the fact that he's shooting less threes. He's taken just six in the two games so far. Secondly, the way he's mixing up the pace of the game and fitting in much better with his Rocket teammates. All of this time that passed allowed Russ to clearly watch a ton of film 
but also figure out exactly what he needed to do within the Rockets' three-point shooting powerhouse of an offense to make it click to the fullest extent. Lastly, I want to specifically point out how Westbrook's baiting defenders with his speed off the dribble to either set up his teammates or expose his matchup by blowing past them with his speed. One of the better guards of this generation, Russell Westbrook's looking to add a title to his resume, and he seemed to be on a mission in these first few games in the bubble. Number five, Chris Stapps Porzingis. Posting up over smaller defenders with a mix of finesse and precision, the Unicorn's looking as comfortable as he's been so far in a Mavs uniform. He's dropped 30 in both seeding games so far and shot 50% from the field in both those games. Getting to his spots seamlessly and utilizing his 7'6 reach with seeming to be improved footwork to go along with that, Chris Stapps has been a complete mismatch either working to his spot off post-ups, blowing past big men to the rim with his handle, or popping out to the three-point line to knock down long-range bombs. Porzingis is proving that if defenders are big enough to stop him inside, they're likely too slow enough to keep up with him on the perimeter. Happily, right now, us fans are getting to witness the most efficient, healthy, and polished version of the Latvian throughout his tumultuous but impressive NBA tenure. The impact this man has on defense has also been extremely impressive so far for the Mavs, as in the two games in the bubble, he's averaged over a steal and two and a half blocks. Number 4, Paul George. After four plus months off of rest, George looks like the MVP candidate we saw last year in Oklahoma City helping to set the franchise record in three-pointers made. In the process of the Clippers' Saturday win against the Pelicans, George also became the first player in franchise history to hit at least eight three-pointers and get at least three steals in a game. For a team to look as polished from deep as the Clippers, and for a player to look as polished off the bounce as Paul George after such a layoff, proves that PG and the Clippers stayed locked in on their championship drive, here, George makes a mockery of Brandon Ingram, hitting him with an elusive double crossover and then converts the jumper off a great screen from Zubats. Give him even an inch of space and PG's been able to make it work from behind the arc. As in both games, creating and hitting ridiculous deep range bombs, Paul's hit at least six three-pointers. Number three, TJ Warren. Coming for his revenge on Jimmy Butler, the Pacers' starting small forward has posted the highest scoring performance of anyone in the bubble so far, and has become the only Pacer player in 15 years since Jermaine O'Neal to put up 50 plus points in a game. A combination of size, shooting, strength, and ball handling has made things easy all throughout the 2019-20 season for Warren, the man's silently been the fifth seeded Pacers' leading scorer we knew he could get buckets. But for him to go off like he did against the Sixers was pretty damn shocking. He was hitting shots from way behind the arc, and by letting it fly and draining spot up and pull up threes like it was nothing, the man had virtual Pacers fans going berserk. Then in his next game against the Wizards, he followed up his career in all-time great Pacer night with another 34 points. As you're checking out TJ's incredible shooting chart along with the deep range bombs, most mesmerizingly impressive from Warren's performance in these first two games, in my opinion, was how composed he looks off the bounce. Warren looked unstoppable on plays like these, where he's guarded by a bigger defender in Simmons, receives one simple screen, and buries a shot in a top point guard defender's face. So, Indiana's wing deserves way more hype for what he's been doing in the first few games. Number two, James Harden. Rightfully, the beard doesn't want to hear anything about the Greek freak, how difficult it was to defend Giannis Antetokounmpo. Nice Harden doesn't get the love he deserves from fans and media, like James Adetokounmpo or Doncic, but Harden is first in every scoring category. The entirety of when he's on the floor, he requires a double team and generally the entire defense's attention. So why is it that Kawhi, LeBron, and Giannis are always the names being dubbed as the top three players in the league? and Harden's name rarely comes up in that discussion. Harden's defense has come a long way since the days where he got memed on that end of the floor, but the 14 of 20 masterclass he put on against the Mavericks was utterly sensational. The man exposed Dallas defenders in ISO situations, picking them apart off the dribble, and either unstoppably stepping back on them or blowing past them with his speed and craftiness. But sorry, James Harden, number one, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Stretching out for lay-ins like MJ in Space Jam, 
The Greek freaks flipped the switch back to MVP mode rather quickly, and boding well for Bucks fans' title aspirations, Adetokounmpo also drained a pull-up three in the mauling of the Celtics that he put on. With a beastly size, length, and speed combination, Giannis dominates by putting supreme pressure on the defense with an under-control and improved handle. You're sure to see a ton of equality storming to the bucket. But whether or not Giannis can consistently knock down shots outside of the paint is going to determine if Milwaukee has a shot at glory in the NBA bubble. But you let me know in the comments section which player you think has been going off the most so far in Orlando. Here's a few answers from last video's question. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Keep watching some of my recent uploads. Thanks to the world for watching. This was DFlow, and I'll see you next video.